This is a walkthrough of the laser simulator from FET and uh, take two. My computer just crashed in the middle of trying to do this before, so let's hope that the second time works a little bit better. So I've already loaded up the simulator using the directions on the worksheet and uh, going to walk through the various ways you can experiment with this simulator and demonstrate the idea of lasing. So right now to start, we have a single atom in the middle of the laser cavity and we have a lamp that is providing photons at a very low rate into that cavity. And you'll notice that many of those photons hit the atom in the center and are absorbed by that atom. Uh, and when they get absorbed, of course now they're not going to absorb when I'm saying so, um, they kick this atom up to a higher energy level. And we see that because it kicks up to a number two, we get a little bit of higher uh, radius on there. And then uh, it goes back down to a lower energy level and gives off a photon identical to the one that first hit it, but in a random direction. And this is something known as spontaneous emission, uh, the release of a photon at some point after uh, absorbing a photon and moving to a higher energy state. And so it asks us to uh, experiment with this lamp control, right? And so uh, start with it low so that the photons are well separated. If you turn it way up, you get lots and lots of photons that are being sent in the middle there, but we'll keep it low for now. And then it says experiment with this lifetime. Well, right now the lifetime is long, and so when a photon hits that atom in the center, it spends a relatively long period of time in the higher energy state. Um, but I could turn the lifetime down, and you'll notice that when a photon is absorbed, it now spends much less time in the higher energy state before decaying back down into the ground energy state. Um, so this, again, is, is spontaneous emission, where the photon is emitted at some point after uh, being absorbed. But if I turn up the lifetime to make it last longer in that second energy state, and also perhaps put a little more photons in there, I will on occasion get something that is known as stimulated emission. And this is where the atom is already in the excited energy state, that second energy level, when another photon hits, and it actually causes a release of two photons that are identical to each other. So that's what the simulator is showing with these little pairs of the photons. Uh, what happens if we change the wavelength of the photons? Right now they're red, so changing wavelength is code for changing color. If I send in blue photons here, suddenly I'm not getting any absorption anymore, and that's because the energy or the wavelength of these blue photons doesn't match uh, the energy gap here uh, on the system. But because this is a simulated world, I can control that and change the energy level of my atom to match, and then I get uh, absorption and both stimulated and spontaneous emission events happening again. Mostly in this case, it looks like uh, the stimulated emission where we're producing the matched pairs. I'm going to go back into the red. All right. It asks us uh, finally in this section, uh, what role do the mirrors play? So mirrors make these photons bounce back and forth in the laser cavity, but at least in this particular simplified arrangement, uh, there's a problem because when I turn the mirrors on, I no longer can get any photons in there from the lamp that was producing the photons. So kind of whatever I have in the cavity is there. And while they bounce back and forth and occasionally enact these stimulated emission events, eventually I lose all of the photons that are in the cavity because nothing is resupplying energy to the system in this particular configuration. But I sometimes can, you know, uh, increase the number of photons. And so sometimes in this situation, they are doubling themselves and making more uh, identical photons back in, bouncing back and forth there. If I turn the mirror reflectivity down, as is a real mirror, then some portion of those photons are going to pass through that partially silvered mirror and come out. And that's what ultimately forms my laser beam, though this laser beam is super low intensity uh, because it uh, doesn't have very many photons and now I've lost all the photons that I had trapped in the cavity. All right, the first question then, to achieve emission from a single atom, how must the laser be adjusted? You have to have matching energy levels. So it doesn't matter 
what wavelength of light you are putting out uh, as long as the energy gap matches that within this two-state system. And when you get this two-state system, then you get absorption and emission of photons. All right, this is not a very realistic model of a laser. We can make it more realistic by changing this to a three energy level simulation. And you'll notice when you do that, uh, we bring in an additional lamp into the mix. And this is playing the role, uh, by the way, of the flash lamp uh, in the laser diagram that we looked at. So I'm going to turn these particular uh, photons back to matching the second energy level here for a bit. Okay. It says, tune the left-hand lamp to match the energy gap between the first and second levels. Just did that. Tune the top lamp to match the energy gap between the first and third levels. I believe it defaults there when you do this. Uh, remove the mirrors for a while, which we've done. But I'm going to turn up the top one so that we're sending in some blue photons into the system as well. And so you'll notice that when we do this, occasionally, if you absorb one of these blue photons, the system gets kicked up to... Uh, the energy state 3, though most of the time it's absorbing these red photons. It's not happening very much. I suppose if I turn down the red lamp a bit, I make it more likely for these uh, blue absorption events to kick it up to the third energy state. All right, so it said remove the mirrors for a while, which we have done, and then put them back in place. And so importantly, when I put the mirrors in place and basically block the, the red light source, I am... Uh, still adding energy to the system in the form of these blue photons. So I am going to uh, turn this off. And my laser is still not too highly powered. And in part, that's due to the lack of uh, intensity and energy being sent in from uh, the top there and also because my partially reflected mirror uh, is losing things so if i make the mirror 100 percent reflective and increase the number of photons coming from that flash lamp i think i will start to see things grow here So the more intensities from each lamp, you know, the more photons you have bouncing around in there. Uh, but also, what happens when we adjust lifetimes here? Well, right now the second lifetime is pretty high, but so is the third life uh, energy level. And I'm going to turn down the, the uh, lifetime of the third energy level. And note that when I do that, the red atoms that are bouncing back and forth in the laser cavity are much more likely to encounter the atom in the second energy state than in the third, and this is where they are reproducing themselves and making more and more of these red photons. And so right now, my lasing power is slowly increasing because I'm replicating more and more of these red photons. So the blue photons kick my system up to the highest energy level. They add new energy to the system. But then if that system has a short lifetime on energy level 3 and a relatively longer lifetime on energy level 2, uh, then I'm getting these red photons to replicate themselves over and over again. And I'm getting more and more of them. And my lasing power is slowly going up, though it would obviously be aided by more atoms in the simulation. It also asks us what happens if you do the reverse, right? What happens if you tune uh, the left hand to match the third energy gap and the, the flash lamp to match the second energy gap? So we'll do that here in a second. Um, almost reached the lasing zone, but not the danger zone yet in this simulator. All right, you probably get the picture there. So I'm going to reset everything. Uh, and go back to three. But here, I'm going to change the wavelength of this one to match the second energy level, at least approximately. 
and this one to match the third. And I'll probably have to adjust these once I get some photons actually coming in. Does this do th anything differently when I try to run this laser? So that one's matched okay. That one's matched okay. Then we'll do a short lifetime on energy level three. And then at some point we will turn on mirrors. But now we kind of have a problem. And the reason that this doesn't ultimately work is the photons that I'm trying to replicate are the ones created by the energy difference between energy level three and energy level two. Uh, but the only photons now actively coming into the system from this simulation of a flash lamp are ones that take it to a lower energy level. And at that lower energy level, that little blue photon can never replicate itself. And so at some point, it may, I guess it may bounce back and forth in the simulator forever, but it's never going to replicate, and we're never going to get any lasing power out of this. Um, you can mess around with what happens if both of them happen to match a particular energy gap, right? So if I take this one up to blue as well, I now have a chance of replicating some of these blue photons. But because it lives in this higher energy state of three, shorter and, and longer in the two, it's not really uh, an effective system. I don't think I have stimulated emission of anything yet that I've seen. It's just emitting these random red photons. And now I'm completely gone with anything that's going back and forth in the cavity. Uh, if you do the first and second gaps, uh, or rather you do them so that they're both the one to two gap, you see a, a similar thing happen. And so the most effective laser has energy from the flash lamp that takes the atom in the laser up to a higher energy level than we're ultimately going to be trying to produce photons at. If the lifetime at that higher energy level is short uh, and the lifetime at the second energy level is somewhat longer, uh, the system works better here. So I somehow created some back and forth at the 3-3 three, three level. So it does work, it just doesn't work as effectively. All right, I'm going to reset everything. Uh, on this, uh, it asks us question two, lowering the lifetime of an energy level, what does that do? It increases the probability of stimulated emission, decreases the probability, or doesn't alter it? Well, again, we can just see that with a single lamp. Right now, I'm going to get a number of stimulated emission events, but if I lower that lifetime so that it spends much less time in the higher energy level, I have a much less probability of producing these stimulated emission events. All right, so now an actual laser, as it points out, has lots of atoms in the lasing medium, so that's what this simulation is. Uh, and we are trying to, um, you know, make this system work. Right now we have a long lifetime second energy level, long lifetime third energy level. I'm going to go ahead and turn the third energy level lifetime down. And now we no longer have uh, the lamp that is uh, creating the initial photon because we have a whole bunch of these and they're going to emit things in random events and enough of those are going to be in the horizontal direction uh, that this is going to work with just a single flash lamp, which is more realistic model of a real laser. So uh, let's turn the lamp up, and ah, it's just showing us light, not individual photons. If you prefer that photon view, we can see the rain of photons coming in, but it might be a little bit clearer if we just see that as a beam of light. But you'll notice now I'm getting a ton of stimulated emission of these red photons, and I'm fairly quickly growing in this lasing category. Somehow a photon escaped, even though this mirror is supposed to be 100% reflective. And so uh, if you don't let any of this energy out and you continue to add energy in from the flash lamp, uh, eventually the system will blow up. I can't remember. I think it just uh, shows a picture of a destroyed laser or something. But a realistic laser is going to have a partially silvered mirror at one end and let some portion of those photons out uh, as the laser beam escaping from your uh, laser. So uh, it asked, uh, you know, can you detect any differences between building a two energy level laser and a three energy level laser? I think we looked at that a little bit earlier. 
we make this good enough to self-destruct. Well, I guess it depends on what you mean by good enough, but if we turn the reflectivity way up and only let some small fraction of the light out and perhaps turn up the intensity of the flash lamp, uh, it doesn't take too long before this thing goes through the lasing category and self-destructs, if I'm remembering right. danger zone and the laser blew up very unexciting ending message there are three more questions to answer and they're all dealing with this energy diagram here the first question says if an atom's electron is at the first energy level so if there's an electron down here what can happen to it can it absorb a blue photon from uh, the lamp uh, and the answer is yes, because blue corresponds to a wavelength, which is an energy gap that's achievable. So one of these electrons could jump up to level three. Uh, could it absorb a red photon, one that had been produced by one of the other atoms in the lasing medium? And the answer is yes as well, because from that ground state up to two is equivalent to uh, a red photon being absorbed there. So both one and two are actually possible. Um, if it's in the second level, what can happen to it? Well, there's a couple of things that can happen to it. It could absorb energy and go up to level three. However, you never actually see this happen because the only photons that we're sending into the system are either red, which is corresponding to this energy gap right here, or blue, which is corresponding to this larger energy gap right here. And so to go from two to three, you'd actually have to absorb a photon that was at uh, a smaller energy difference and nothing in the system is currently doing that. Um, so if it's in the second energy level, um, what about the emission events? Can it undergo spontaneous emission and spontaneously go back to state number one? The answer to that is yes, though again, the more photons you have bouncing around in the laser cavity, the less likely that is to happen. Can it undergo stimulated emission where it's hit by another identical photon and then a pair of those photons are released? And the answer is also yes. Uh, so in fact, one or two can happen. The final question deals with the lifetime. The longer the lifetime we have at the third energy level, the more time the, fo the uh, atoms rather will spend in this third energy level state and the less likely you are to get this stimulated emission of photons that correspond to the second energy state. So the advantage of having a short lifetime for the third energy level and a long lifetime for the second energy level is that the atoms get kicked up to state three by the incoming energy from the flash lamp, but they don't stay in that state very long, and they're much more likely to be found in state two. And state two is the state you need them in to get hit by another red photon and produce the stimulated emission to make more and more and more identical red photons.